Welcome back to ETF.com Live, the video edition. My name is Dave Nodig, Managing Director here at ETF.com. Today we had a great and I think a little unusual question in the live chat, which was about why a fund might use a swap instead of stock exposure. Now this came because some of the cannabis ETFs that are out there, and there's five of them now, are using swaps to get at least some of their exposure to equities they might otherwise have problems getting. So what is a swap and how would this end up in your ETF? The easiest way to think about a swap is it's really just a bet between two people. You and I make an agreement that at the end of the day, based on some other thing, the price of a stock, the where the weather ends up at the end of the day, we're going to exchange some money. Uh, this gets used, for instance, if somebody wants exposure to a big, complicated, say, options-based strategy that requires really specific expertise, they might engage with a swap counterparty instead of trying to manage all that money themselves. Uh, these are often also called total return swaps because generally you're getting not just the price movement of an underlying security, but the impact of any income that might come along for the ride. So these get used in everything from interest rates to individual equities. So what actually happens? Well, like I said, you and I negotiate that at the end of the day, we're going to settle up based on how, say, the price of a basket of stocks moves. And if the things move in the direction I want them to, you'll end up paying me a little bit of money at the end of the day. And if they go the other way, I end up paying you a little bit of money at the end of the day. And that's literally done through a set of bank accounts where we just agree to mechanically move money back and forth between the winner and the loser at the end of every day as part of our true up, as part of our settlement. And then tomorrow, that bar bet starts all over again. This is a really useful and interesting tool for portfolio managers who are trying to do something a little difficult. In this case, with these cannabis ETFs, I suspect some of this may come down to whether or not they can hold some of these companies based on their relationship with their custodian. It might also be the case that these are difficult to trade securities and therefore they're offloading the trading and, and finding the best prices for these securities to a third party who's just guaranteeing them that end of day price movement plus or minus any dividends that might have happened. So that's really the core. That's how swaps work. They're not really something to be afraid of. The only exposure you have as an investor whose fund might be in swaps is the overnight risk that the swap counterparty went bankrupt. And even if that happened, all you'd be out would be the change overnight that wasn't delivered because of that counterparty, assuming it went in your direction. That's a pretty minimal risk when you consider that most swap counterparties are giant money setter banks that aren't really at risk of going bankrupt overnight. Even in the case of big bankruptcies in the past, like say Lehman, those daily settled swaps didn't end up with people losing all of their money. It just meant they were out a day's worth of what a performance might have happened that evening. Anyway, that's it for swaps and ETFs. I hope that clears things up and we hope we'll see you next week.